This is the Sinister Minister, Father James Mitchell, inviting you to tune in to Wrestling With Regret for biting satire, witticisms, and deeply profound insight on the ridiculous world of pro wrestling, hosted by the mad scientist himself, Brian Zane. Hey, do you remember back when I said that stupid thing? No, 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 not that stupid thing, no, the other one. No, not that either. No, this thing. I can only imagine how disappointing it was for those little hucksters across the country who went to the record store and paid their hard-earned allowance money to get those albums and hoping to hear their favorite wrestler sing or at least perform some music, and he was virtually non-existent. <laughs> Boy, was I dumb then. <laughs> Skinnier, too. Musician, movie star, restaurateur, paid shill. Is there anything besides wrestling that Hulk can do? In 1995, all those little Hulksters and Hulkamaniacs finally got their wish with the release of Hulk Rules. It was the one and only album put out by the Wrestling Boot Band, comprised of Hogan, his then wife Linda, Jimmy Hart, and JJ McGuire, a frequent collaborator of Hart who helped work on some classic themes for guys like Shawn Michaels, Jimmy Snuka, and Ted DiBiase, and who also looks exactly like Jimmy Hart. When I was doing research for this album, I saw it categorized as album-oriented rock, meaning it's technically on the same level as Tommy, Ziggy Stardust, The Downward Spiral, and The Wall. AOR albums are thematic in nature, considering the common thread with these songs is, yay Hogan, I guess it fits. This album is 10 tracks of pure ego stroking the likes of which wouldn't be seen again until the Hulkster talked about his penis size while under oath. And so help me God, I'm gonna walk you through this red and yellow musical hellscape if it kills me. The Hulkster's in the house Check him out, check him out We start things off with a riff that might as well have been lifted from an instructional VHS. We then get some chanting from what can't be any more than three people. Get up off your seat He's got a brand new beat Are we going to be hearing that beat anytime soon? When the going gets tough The tough get rough That chorus makes up 90% of the song. The Hulkster's in the room! Hulk's in the room? Quick, hide your trophy wives! Ah, American Made, the budget brand version of the much better Real American. It's the most listened to song on the album by default since it was Hogan's theme in WCW. This song embraces the merits of nationalism so much, I'm kind of surprised it hasn't been used for a presidential campaign. As you listen to the rest of the album, you realize that that grade is a D plus. It'd be a solid F, but you know, at least most of the stuff in this album's in tune. And of course, you wouldn't want to mess with the flag by, let's say, making it the theme of a Rococulous gimmick. Hey kids, do you like the hip hops? I was born, I was bred, I was southern fed. Got a crazy idea running through my head. California is a place that I had to be. Then a speech in the pit really set me free. Hulkster's Back is the first track of the album that features Hogan in a significant role, and shockingly is not the only one that features him rapping. And just what kind of rhymes was Hogan dropping in the same year that Gangsta's Paradise, Dear Mama, and The Crossroads were topping the charts? Fortune and fame was middle name. The kind is high as the sky, he remains the same. With the training and the prayers and the vitamins too. Don't mess with us, or we'll beat you too. It's a relatively short song about how Hogan moved to California for reasons. It's never really fleshed out. And at one point he calls out Ted Turner? Turn, but the real bizarre part of this song is at the very beginning, when Linda Hogan provides some banter with Hulk. Oh my god! Check out the pump, brother! Wanna know? Wanna know? Wanna know? Wanna know? Wanna know? If you know what she's saying, you're a liar. That part's bad, but it doesn't get much better when she has her own solo track. It's funny to listen to now because she hates him. Wow, a guest musician with even broader appeal than Hogan!
This song is the first of the album that isn't a total Hogan ego stroke. Instead, it's Jimmy Hart telling the tale of a traveling band of musicians. Listen and wonder as the Mouth of the South does his best to convince you he's heard Jimmy Buffett at least once. So I'll lay on the beach and get me a tan And I'll play my music with the boys in the band And I'll send you a postcard whenever I can sincerely The Wrestling Boo Traveling Band You know, this song's actually not that bad. I mean, it's overly simplistic, but it does tell the story of the struggles of the road and the weariness one can feel while being separated from a loved one, traveling as a musician or a wrestler. I met a girl on the beach yesterday And she looked a lot like you She heard the band play late last night And she thought the bass player was cute <laughs> I'm sorry, Jimmy, I, I have to stop you there. That's a sentence that's never even begun as a thought formed in a woman's head, much less admitted to another human being. Being a bass player is only less detrimental to your love life than starring in a commercial for an incontinence drug. Uh, who was the bass player in this album anyway? Ah, oh, there it is. It's the same song as Crank It Up from Piledriver. Practically the exact same song. That's all I got. Our next track is called I Wanna Be a Hulkamaniac, where the... Hang on, play from the top again? Does that sound familiar to anyone else? As you're wrapping your head around this link between Owen Hart and Hulk freaking Hogan, the chorus of the song is slapped onto your eardrum like a wet fish as a group of adults try to sound like kids. Heavily medicated kids. This move is by design. See, the chorus is meant to be lame and sleepy, so it draws you in as a listener. Then it hits you with, you guessed it, Hulk Hogan rapping unsolicited life advice. Try to do good each and every day. Don't give up nothing bad to say. Always go swimming with a buddy. Work real hard and always study. When the dealer tries to push on you, just tell him what you're gonna do. Yes, sound like you're already on something, then hopefully the dealer will just walk away. This song's kind of all over the place. Hogan and a more nasally than usual Jimmy Hart are lifeguards apparently, but they also like to party, and it seems like those two things shouldn't be going on at once. I was walking down the beach, looking for some action, had my radio set on a rap rap station. Saw a girl in trouble, a sticky situation. She wanted me to give her mouth to mouth of Not only has Hogan learned nothing from other contemporary rap rock bands at the time, like the Beastie Boys or Red Hot Chili Peppers, he's also very non-committal with his music choices. We were cruising down the beach, checking out the action, had my radio rocking to a heavy metal station. That's twice in this song they rhymed action with station. And they were both bad. Whoa, we just got to witness Hogan's midlife crisis begin in real time! So this one, I can't really make fun of. It's a ballad about a young Hogan fan in the Make-A-Wish program. The story goes, the boy passed away before a UK show, and the seat reserved for him was left bare. According to Hogan's autobiography, the proceeds from this album went to help the family of that little boy. I used to tear my shirt, but now you tore my heart. I knew you were a Hulkamaniac right from the very start. With that in mind, even though the song sounds like it was played on a dollar store keyboard and Hogan sings about as well as he raps, at least some bad work can do some good. Well, I'll make one joke. I read it in the papers. I saw it on TV. I guess it'll be one empty seat when I wrestle at Wembley. For the record, Hulk Hogan never wrestled in Wembley Stadium, or Wembley Stadium for that matter. Classy sax solo! And that was Hulk Rules. This album absolutely delivers everything it promises, by which I mean unabashed praise of the Orange Goblin himself. 
All those years ago, I asked why Hogan didn't have more of a presence in the wrestling albums. Well, here's my answer. This album is the epitome of an excess of ambition and ego, with some of the most bland, corny music and lyrics ever recorded. Though not a good album by any measure, it did help elevate wrestling rappers like Randy Savage and Kurt Angle simply because of the fact they weren't as bad as Hulk Hogan. This album rose the top 10 of the Billboard Children's Chart, which only means that 10-year-old wrestling fans will buy anything. Hulk may rule, but this album still stinks. Hey, which of these two do you think got all the unsold copies in the divorce? Be sure to thumbs up this video if you like it, comment below, subscribe to Wrestling With Regret, and buy the t-shirts at ProWrestlingTees.com. I'm Brian Zane, and I'll see you next time.